Howdy doody folks. How are we on this Friday night? Three streams in a row. Knocking them down. And I have tea. Hi Laurie. How you doing? Uh, we'll do a little bit of chat before we go in. Uh, the uh, The aim this evening is really to continue the work on um, on um, black crab, really. Uh, and tonight we've got to work on um, the USB part, which is going to be a whole lot of fun. Given the other streams, <laughs> it's bound to be fun. I just realised how creased my colour looks on here. It's because it's been under my hoodie all day. Um, we were having a discussion earlier, actually, uh, on Discord, um, which was quite interesting. We were talking about uh, we were talking about lots of things, including amalgam and the boards, but in particular, we were talking about um where we take the how, how we how we handle the communication between the host and the uh the device so that could be um that could be over usb or one of the other things i want to do i, I have potentially a board design a low power board that um uh, could well be uh, Bluetooth based. So whatever the protocol is or the wrappers or what, however we do it, then there needs to be a way of um, packaging the information, um, you know, between the host and, and the board and preferably something, you know, simple. We, we looked at a few different possibilities um, uh, this afternoon, actually, or we discussed a few. So what we were currently looking at doing is something very simple, um, which is basically just using um, UDP datagrams. And then wrapping those using slip. Remember that old protocol? Slip is unbelievably simple. Um, and it's a lot better than some of these uh, escape characters type standards that use things like zeros. You know, if you use zero as an escape character, that's like, oh, especially if you're sending something like a um, FPGA bit file. Of which there are a lot of zeros. Um, in fact, we should probably do um, some run length encoding. Look at uh, doing that. That might be um, a nice in enhancement for the uh, bit files. I see my uh, rate is jumping, my frame rate my streaming rate <coughs> oh choking myself as well <coughs> um why is that dipping down like that that's not good um so yeah that was an interesting conversation we might want our backward compatibility with the um format that we used on ice core and all the black ice products previously <clears throat> but that could be a fallback mode most of the normal communication should operate um, around this new protocol <clears throat> that that protocol would enable us to do all sorts of um, interesting stuff um, so yes we could transfer over the um, 
FPGA bit files. We could also use it to write to specific uh, areas. Um, you know, in flash and or any other memory notation, potentially. Um, you, ha you you're effectively with the UDP packet, you have uh, 16 bits at a time address wise. You'd still have to chunk most of the stuff, but for smaller telemetry and things, it would be great. You know, particularly if the stuff coming back, you could also easily, you know, do command and control type stuff as well. Um, but the advantage of going something with something like a UDP is um, it's kind of universality, really. You know, it's a fairly lean, you know datagram protocol but if you have any thoughts on that do let us know in the chat um, right let's just let's have a look let's see where we are so let's just review a bit previously let me just switch my um, desktop here as if by magic um, so on a little list of things here, um, so we, we, we've done all of the, uh, the setup stuff. I'm going to start taking that off. Actually, we don't need all of that. That's the part one. Part two. <clears throat> so last night, <clears throat> uh, in typical style, um, we hit a bit of a roadblock <laughs> that stumped us for a bit, but, um, what we were primarily working on was the, you know, getting a kind of uh, mode button working, uh, very simple really, um, but using interrupts as well. Um, currently on the um, ice core, you have two operational modes. One is the kind of real time mode, which is a default. Um, where you're just programming the FPGA. The second mode enables you to program more permanently, you know, actually go into um, go into the um, flash device and make your uh, bit files for the FPGA permanent so that when it reboots, it reloads. So you actually change permanently what's on there. Um, on the newer boards, we're going to have a slightly different arrangement to that, to be fair. We want a richer protocol that enables us to do things that are much more flexible than that. Um, and do things like telemetry, etc. But yesterday, um, what we were doing is just covering some basic stuff. It's actually quite useful because it showed us how we could do the interrupts in embedded Rust, um, or a interrupt in this particular case. But we also used Semaphore and Mutex as well, which was quite good. Um, today, however, oh, the problem that we had yesterday, which we did solve in the end, by the way, if, you, uh, if you're going back um, to check the uh, stream, um was another library issue that we had what we found was we we were taking hints from the examples in the stm32 f7 xx hal but when we followed the structure of the examples there was um a couple of things but one particular call in setting up the um, interrupt, the pin interrupt, where one of the functions um, was taking two arguments. But whenever we compiled that here, um, it complained that it was too many arguments, two arguments rather than one, which it, it was very odd. But not only that, there were some issues with the way that the packages were being imported as well. Uh, in the end, we, we managed to work it out 
um, that the uh, version that we were looking at in the repository was obviously, you know, rather different to the stable version that had gone into the library, which we were using. So we managed to solve most of that fairly easily in the end, just by um, pulling down the, um, the latest version rather than the stable version. If there is such a thing as a sta stable version of these crates. Um, the last official crate version was 0 0.2.0 for that particular crate. Um, so that was kind of cool. I mean, we should have picked that up earlier. It became obvious towards the end that there was a difference between the code we were looking at and what was supported in the library. And then it just got confirmed, really. Um, when I looked through the issues on the repo, someone else had had some similar issues. Well, not with this particular function call, but with differences in the way that we were accessing parts of the library compared to the examples. So that was that. So today, then, let's look at um, the USB CDC. Again, we're going to work from examples that's, that are already provided in the HAL repository. <clears throat> just to remind you what we're working on here um, so what we're doing is we're black crab is basically the name we've given to the uh, software that we're developing which is going to be all the new firmware and the runtime software that's required for heterogeneous com computation really um, and that's going to run in the microcontroller and also control what's running on the FPGA for example for the moment, however, we don't have the um, the hardware that's still in you know process. But what we're using is um, the ice core. Now, the ice core is the system on the module part of Black Ice MX. Um, so we can certainly um, develop a bunch of the software because this has some commonality doesn't have everything that we have on the new boards, but we can get the basic stuff done. Um, and particularly given that we're doing it with Rust this time rather than C++, um, there's a bit more um, experimentation required, should we say? Polite way of putting it. So um, without further ado, let's just jump in. So, um, currently, if we look at our source, this is how it looks at the moment. So, what we're doing here is we've created uh, a semaphore at the top here. This is used to communicate the state, the mode state, if you like. Um, and we can flip that with the uh, with the button, and then we have the button uh, resource itself, and that that needs to be shared with both the main loop here and the interrupt. So we have to provide safe access to that by using a mutex, which is what all this um, gobbledygook typing looks like. <laughs> Oh, I do love all that. Look at that. Looks good in rainbow brackets, doesn't it? Um, basically, uh, all the function does, we, we, we take the peripherals. So you do that in Rust. It's a singleton. You can only do it once. Um, we then take uh, parts of, the, of that peripheral that we need to manipulate. So here it's the external interrupt and assist config. Uh, we also take the clock. Uh, device network and management um, we take the gpib gpiob port because that's where our leds are connected and also our mode button um, we then create an led for the mode and status and for the mode button itself and 
we then set up some interrupts and a trigger edge trigger on the buttons pin we run our clock we then have a critical section where we um, set the mode button into that mutex button control we then um, unmask the interrupt we set the LED statuses um, states and then we have a in the loop section here we have a critical section where we check the state of the semaphore to see if it's changed from the um, interrupt if it has we then you know toggle the LED or not and toggle the, sem the semaphore at the same time and then down the bottom here we've got the uh, interrupt that's obviously fired whenever it sees a rising edge on the button pin and what that basically does is it changes the state of the semaphore um, so what we're going to do now is look at what we need to add to start getting USB support because what we need is communication with the host um, do do make yourself known if you if you're joining the um, the stream um, we don't bite generally and uh, if you've got any questions just fire them away or if there's anything you need me to explain or you just want to let us know how you're doing say hi so uh, let's look at let me get this open so that I know where I'm working from I need to make this a bit smaller I think Hmm, wow. <clears throat> Let us have a look. So, USB. What are we going to need? Uh, so, looking at the example, um, by the way, so just so you can see what we're working from here, I should give you the uh, URL link. Bear with me. Uh, do, 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 do. I did have this open in my browser window. Let me just check. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes. Uh, let's just. So this is what we're working with. This is the STM32 uh, F7 XX HAL, um, and we're working from some of the examples within this just in case you want to go and dig around so um one of the things that, I, that we're going to need to do first is um change the clock setup at the moment we've got a very simple clock setup here and what we're going to need to do is um is manually set up um, we need to set up that we're using an external clock its frequency and then we're going to start using the PLL and in particular we need the special 48 megahertz PLL which is used by the USB device so let me do this so that's gonna be so this is what it was before that's all gonna go so let's check that out uh, uh, RCC let me RCC I need to reconstrain that because I changed that hmm okay so it's gonna be RCC constrain and we're going to need to do this we're going to need to configure and that's going to need to be uh, i don't think i need to freeze on this let's get rid of that uh, 
we're going to need to call this with two arguments. We're going to need our um, clock rate. Oh. I need that. What else are we going to need? We're going to need HSA, high speed. Sorry, I'm being a being an idiot. Twenty five megahertz and needs to be the external oscillator. So this is different from the example. I'm not quite sure what they're doing in the example. I think in the example on their HAL they're using a um They're using the discovery kit, which has uh, a, an oscillator. So they're not using a crystal, they're using an oscillator. So um, let's just do this and then I'll respond to um, God damn it, what am I doing? HSC clock module, that is the right one, isn't it? Just import this actually. If I can. HSC. Hmm. Hold on, I'm going to need to import this from the HAL. HAL. I'm going to need to do use um, TM32 uh, F. Seven, oh, me. XX, how? Um, I'm going to need RCC. HSC clock. I'm going to need, I'm going to need HSC clock and clock mode, I think, according to this. Um, come on, play nicely, please, with me today, ID. Right, so HZ clock mode, and that needs to be oscillator. Wait a minute.
oscillator. There we go. I think they use bypass on their example because they're using a um, they're using an external oscillator. Let me just read what uh, DSP eight bit saying. Hi Al. Um, let me come back to that in a sec and I'll, I'll try and answer some of that uh, DSP. Let me just get this clock bit configured first. Um, use PLL and use need the 48 megahertz PLL. And what else do we need? This clock again. So the final frequency we want is 216 megahertz. Um, six. Uh, hertz. And we need to then freeze. It doesn't change. That will configure the clock, I think. So what does that like here? 25 megahertz. Oh, God, what am I doing? Yes, this should be HSE clock. Better. Uh, need a semicolon at the end, of course. I love the way that in Rust you stack your calls on the object like that. That's kind of cool. I always feel like I should be putting those inside curly brackets or something. Right, so before I go on and do a bit more of this, just to answer. Um, so DS, DSP 8-bit is asking an interesting question. Uh, hi, Al, the other day I had to go. Uh, I just find, find out that you're proposing using Rust for the STM32 F4 microcontrollers. It's actually the F7, not the F4, but whatever. I don't know Rust. What is the trade-off using Rust versus C versus MicroPython in terms of hardware resources? I find your perspective of using Rust in the middle of C slash C++ and Python. Is that correct? Um, I'm really moving on from C and C++. I like C. I'm not so keen on C++. Um, never have been. I hate the way they keep adding to that damn thing. It's become so complex now that it's just madness, frankly. Um, rather than solving, you know, the original issues. Rust has a number of advantages over C. Most of them are to do with the way it handles memory. It has a much stricter model, and which, by the way, is something I'm more used to, having done concurrent C in things like XC, for example. So I also have to do a lot of work in critical medical type 
application commercially and things as well. So I like to have, um, you know, a language that's that's good in that sense. Um, I mean, often I'd, I'd have to use Misera and all that kind of stuff in my commercial work. With Rust, you don't really need to do that because Rust already covers three quarters of what Misera gives you and then some. And Misra says nothing about memory. Um, so Rust has a very good memory model. It's a bit difficult at first. You need to understand what it's doing with memory. Well, you need to understand what you're doing with memory. What, what Rust does is basically it gives you the tools to manage memory properly. Okay. Um, but as well as that low level stuff, which is good, um, the patterns that you have in Rust are excellent. Um, a lot of you might not be familiar with some of the things I've done in the past, but I've programmed um, in lots of different environments, including even doing functional programming for a number of years, uh, primarily in Erlang for very high uptime uh, telecommunications type hardware stuff. But um, I've used quite a lot of different languages over the years. Um, and I love things like uh, communicating sequential process structures, models and things like that. And also things like, um, you know, hierarchical behavioral models and things like that, which are very useful in things like robotics and stuff. But having to do those in C is actually pretty difficult because the constructs aren't there in the language. There are some things you can do in C++, but even there, um, they're really just workarounds or layers over the top. Something like Rust does provide a lot of the really important uh, primitives and language constructs that enable you to work in it with any of these models, and then some. Plus, it gives you the good memory models and stuff that work. It is ideal as a kind of systems language um, and ideal for uh, embedded, in my opinion. And it produces very efficient um, and relatively um, fast uh, code, in my experience. So that's why I'm using it. But I'm using it really to replace C slash C++. You know, once I start going down the Rust route, I don't do the C, C++, or I try not to mix it. I mean, you can mix stuff. You can use C libraries from Rust, etc. But you should really try and avoid that if what you're doing is going to be, you know, safe or critical code. Because the moment you shell out to that, that's all considered unsafe code from the Rust point of view. Um, the Python side of things is slightly different. I mean, I have to do quite a bit of Python as well. Um, I've used it a lot in the past for writing test stuff, for example. A lot of the testing I've done is written in Python, particularly from on the host side, when you're toasting devices, you know, embedded devices and stuff. Um, so that's going to continue. And I'm still going to need to use Python. Uh, and I still plan to use Python. Um, in um, some of the areas um, of software moving forward for these boards. In particular, I also like using nMigen. Now, with MicroPython, I still think there's a space for that. The good thing with MicroPython is in certain situations, that may be a nice quick on-ramp for people to get into the FPGA stuff. But it's not going to make sense in all of the situations. Um, and MicroPython itself has issues in terms of performance. It has a very, very high memory overhead. So you actually need to have an awful lot of memory in order to use it in any you know, reasonable sense. Um, and quite often you need a lot of um, read-only or flash memory because of all the C libraries that sit underneath MicroPython in order for it to be reasonably performant. Um, 
and in that sense it's it's not a highly performant thing but it's great if you just wanted to prototype something right um and you have the resources to spare but you're not necessarily getting the maximum out of whatever that you're using but it also does constrain you if you can only design with micropython then the uh, choice of microcontrollers and stuff that you can use is very very constrained because you need all this extra memory overhead etc so that's my choice for using rust it's either going to be c or rust so for a long time i've been looking at rust thinking i've got to switch over because it's a better model so that's what i'm doing so it's really the python stuff still going to be there that's not going to go away and neither is the nmigen stuff at this point or the verilog stuff we're still going to have to do bits of those but um from a programming point of view and from a heterogeneous point of view what i'm hoping to do is not only write the firmware for managing the fpga and that's what um black crab is about but it goes a bit further than that there's a lot of integration that's going to happen between the microcontroller and the fpga so there will be if i take for example the amalgam board which is the ecp5 board that we're working on that will have a high speed interface between the two and there'll be a bus on the fpga side and then there'll be an fmc interface between the two that enables us to map into the uh, microcontroller memory or into rust's memory in this case the devices that we've synthesized in the FPGA, giving us a continuous integrated platform into that. Um, we're still going to need to build protocols and interfaces on there that interface to the various uh, different pieces of hardware, for example. In those cases, we can use Verilog, we can use Mmigen, whatever we like, really. And then there's also a missing piece in the middle, which is your accelerated compute piece so um, the accelerated compute piece will be done via uh, higher level synthesis but i need something that's different from most of the popular high level synthesis that you see which tend to be oriented towards the very large fpgas um, we need to be able to do some efficient high level synthesis that is much more modern and can go down lower. We can make smaller, smaller things. We don't want to make small cores. We want to make small state machines, for example. Um, and I am eyeing up a number of different things in that area. Um, so the rust part of that will come into play, is what I'm looking at. But that's that's much further down the road. We're nowhere near that point yet and I'll, I'll come back with more of that later um so hopefully that at least starts answering your question dsp um but far away any more questions just far away uh, see if we can clarify i can't answer all of them obviously because it's ongoing and we make some of it up as we go along it's the way this this community works these boards tend to be a product of our community rather than you know, one person. So that's our uh, USB um, clock. Sorry, that's our general clock setup, including the, this is the important one. That's the PLL that gets used to um, drive the USB peripheral, which is a synopsis piece of intellectual property inside the stm32 the reason i know that is because that's what they call the libraries i didn't know that until i started doing this in rust strangely stm32 materials don't really mention that so there you go uh, and the other thing sorry you probably also missed dsp the pieces yesterday where i said the, the other thing i'm trying to do here is um in the past when i wrote the firmware stuff uh, for the ice core and the black ice chips we were a little bit tied into the vendor tools so we'd use the stm32 mx hardware abstraction layers and we'd use some of their tools like the stm32 uh, 
MX cube, or although we don't use their IDEs, we use just regular GCC and um, whatever editors we prefer. Um, actually, we were using, I think, uh, Visio, Visual Studio Code for the um, C++ version of the last firmware, the MyStorm firmware. But um, so one of the other things I want to do is not be tied into the vendor libraries because looking forward at the boards that are coming down the road, they won't necessarily be STM32 based. I mean, I can see some that are, um, but I can certainly see one quite possibly that won't be. So um, that may still change by the time I get to that one because I can't make that board yet because of issues with uh, lattice supply of these their new generation of Nexus based chips. Um, I've kind of put that one off to one side for the moment. That's the kind of the low powered product. Um, but I'm a bit stuffed until lattice get their uh, act together. That must be the least successful product launch they ever did. They launched it, what, a year and a half ago, two years ago? The Nexus range were the first ones. They had the Crosslink NX first, then the Serbius before, and they just haven't had any stock. How nuts is that? You know, year and a half down the line, and you still can't buy any of this stuff anyway. Annoying. Come on, get your ass together, Lattice, please. We want to make boards. Uh, half of the uh, stuff has all been fuzzed by um, Catgate. But he's probably there's probably no hurry now to get that fuzzing finished until Lattice, you start shipping product instead of just talking about it. Anyhow, so um, moving on. Uh, so we've done the clocks. So that clock setup is a bit more sophisticated than what we were using yesterday. Yesterday, effectively, when we were just doing the buttons and the day before when we were doing the... Um, LED stuff we're just basically using you know the default setup which we'll use in turn loss later so um, we have to do a bit more here we have to also enable the PLL and the uh, uh, the uh, USB PLL more, more specifically we need to turn that on because we need that 48 megahertz PLL to drive the USB unit inside so that is that part um, we also need, let me think, crikey, we're going to need to do a, we need the pins, these are going to need the pins, so here we've, um, we've set up, uh, or we've split out GPIO, GPIO port B. So we're going to need to split out the um, need to, what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to split out the uh, it's port A, isn't it? Oh, what are we doing? So let's just change that tool. Uh, a because on port a we have uh, our two usb pins that we are going to need to configure to connect to our usb so um let's create that now so we're gonna need oh uh, we need a library hold on what we need is the how OTG HS is it OTG HS yes let's just do this we're gonna need to add in OTG
Yeah, how does it not pick that up? Oh. Oh. Oh, no, I hope they haven't got the problem we had last night. That should be OTG. Um, FS, but for some reason that's not coming through, which has got me worried that there's maybe another library issue. Let's come back to this in a sec. USB um, bus and USB. This is being feature limited, so I wonder if that's what's preventing me from seeing that. Possibly. Let's see how we get on. The compiler will complain if it can't find it. Um, so I'm going to do here that we're going to create the USB uh, device here, which we will call, ironically, USB um, USB no. boop, boop, boop. Oh, interesting. Again, it doesn't like this. Might have to do a compile in a second just to see what it's complaining about here. And you can tell it's not um, playing nicely with me. <laughs> hmm. It's not picking up tight there. Okay, what do we need? We need um, OTG FS uh, Global, and we need device dot OTG. Device, comma, and we need the power clock. Uh, OTGFS power clock, HS power clock, no, FS power clock. Uh, comma. And this is a little bit odd syntactically. Um, GPIO A. Need P11. And we need alternate modes. What alternate mode AF10? Hold on. And same. But for PA12. PA12, well, we need a comma after that, and clocks. We're using this now, so I need to. Does that need to be mutable? No. 
This is really weird how it's doing the formatting here. This is making me suspicious. Okay, um, let's just see what DSP is saying. Uh, DSP 8 bit says, yes, I see the roadmap that you're seeing interesting and efficient uh, high level synthesis. Stop. I imagine the tool chain for designing a piece of application in the STM 32F7 in conjunction with the FPGA course uh, connect with interfaces interfaces such as the um, it's actually was it FF, FMC uh, as you said thank you DSP yeah that's the plan um, I'm gonna just do a compile here because I think it's going to throw up a problem with the libraries bear with me let's just see what it says here I'm a bit worried about this um, device not being picked up uh, STM 32 yeah see it's saying here could not <laughs> god here we go down this journey again another rabbit hole lorry our fave OTG underscore FS. I didn't think I could see it there when I was looking at it. So it can't see that under the root of the STM 32F7 Howl crate. But yet, if we look, so let's do it again. Let's bring up the browser so that you guys can see here. So if you look at this, we look at the examples, the one that we're um, getting our hints from, the example they provide here most definitely shows that the OTGFS is definitely under the root of the STM32F7 how. But yet we cannot see it under there and our compiler is complaining because it cannot find that there hmm curiouser and curiouser as they would say so it's definitely under the house so if we were to look let's look at the how itself if we look at the source and we look under here there we see otg underscore fs Uh, Laurie's saying, I've just been looking at that. We have two versions of the STM32 F7 HAL, one in register and one in get checks. So maybe I should do a clean. Would that get rid of it? Is that what's the problem here? Pretty sure we did a clean yesterday evening on this. Oh, 
why would it use the one in the registry? And not the one that it's just downloaded. Um, just to remind people, this is one of the issues we had yesterday. So if we look, um, basically the cargo.toml file lists all the libraries, among other things that we're using. So yesterday, what we had, because of that issue that we couldn't see certain, uh, the API was different for the STM32X HAL than the library appeared to be providing. So we changed that from a normal version with features, you know, like you see here, to um, directly download uh, from the repository using Git. So we should be using the same version instead of the 0.2.0, uh, .0, which was the stable version. <sighs> so I've just told Cargo, which is the Rust tool and package manager, to clean, I basically um, clean out the old libraries and stuff, and then go and get them. So it should have read this. So we should definitely be doing the right thing now. But yet, what do I see? The same, the very same issue. So how on earth is that the case? How does that work then? If we're pulling from Git and we're building from the source and I am looking at the source. Here. It is most definitely under the root OTG underscore FF, FS dot RS. And within that, we're looking for USB, which is a structure, as we expect, as well as an implementation. Um, So what I don't see is USB bus, but it's there, look. So there's a USB bus type. Which is a generic, clearly. Um, so if it's there in the source, why can I not see it? Uh, I did have a look through the issues yesterday, and I couldn't, I couldn't see anything else that would affect us directly. Let me just double check again. Link of scripts in the wrong place. Yeah, my squared C SPI. I don't know. Uh, that was the one where we found out what the problem with the library is. Pack cannot be brought into scope when compiling with the STM thirty two seven six nine. So if you look at this, it says in the 0 0.2.0 version of the pack is exported as a device which we changed in our code um, and what they said here was just use git to pull it down rather than a specific version i mean they're using a different chip but that's doesn't matter in this case that's just the feature so is there anything else on this issue list to do with USB can't see anything here I guess we should check those that have already been uh, solved
Um, nothing there of any significance. Uh, Okay, I've just thought of something. Mm. The way that this stuff is enabled, there is dependency. So if I go back to the code here, this is very important. So if I look at their cargo tunnel, you've, it's a fairly complicated file, but in here, they have some dependency stuff. So if we look at the 730, they've included the high speed USB, but not the, oh, wait a minute. It's not the high speed USB. Yes, it's called the, it, that's what they call it. It's not higher speed, but let me just see. What do they say about FSB? Maybe they don't enable it. So I might need to go in and change the tunnel, which will be an absolute pain. Um, See in their examples, they don't officially support this, but I know it works because I remember downloading the repo when I was examining this. I'm working inside the repo, getting this stuff to work. So, hold on. Maybe there's something more here. Let me just check carefully. I wonder if this has anything to do with it. It doesn't say anything about... Is it saying anything about STM32 FMC? Okay, hold on a sec. Let me just check one other thing. We are using Do I need to include something else here? Okay. Let me just try something quickly.
Okay, maybe I need to pass this in in my. Hold on. Bear with me, folks. I just had an idea. Sorry, I'll switch back in a sec. Let me, I'm just messing with the uh, libraries at the moment to see if I can get anything um, to work. Let me just turn that browser off so you can see what I'm doing. I'm wondering, do I select it? Do we have to put that? Do we have to put something here? Like, oh. Do we have to include that here, maybe? If I save that, what happens? I didn't complain, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it worked either. If I go back here, if I go back to Compile, does that make any difference? No. Um, I'm wondering if there's something we have to switch on here. It talks about, this is interesting. So if we look at the code, right? So let's just try and understand this, right? If we look at the code, let me turn the browser back on so I can show you guys. This gives us a clue, I think. Um, we're gonna probably get good at solving these issues. All part of the fun, folks. So if we look at the example that we're um, using as our inspiration, look what it does here. It expects that feature to be passed in. USB underscore FS. So it expects that to be passed in. When that's built. That doesn't necessarily mean that it expects that to be passed in to the library, though. If you see what I mean. Or does it? Let me see, does it say anything here? I mean, there needs to be some way of telling it that we're using HF, uh, FS or HS. So obviously when we, if we were to run this as the example, we'd run it like that and pass this USB FS in. 
but these are based on you checking out the repository of the stm 32 f 7 xx house so within it so you're just accessing it within the repo itself which is slightly different so the problems we had before what did we look at there's an extra file in here that that, that isn't relevant for us when we're using it externally but is relevant when you're using it in that mode um, although I don't understand why we can't see this because that's clearly there you just does it do anything funky in here this is where we were watching um, Where we one of the files that we were looking at when we saw um, when we were diagnosing the issue with finding the pack is you can see it being remapped as pack, um, which is common in the peripheral house to use a PAC um, shortener. Um, but if we go down here, does it do that? RT, it should create pack, turn on interrupt. Mm. We are using RT in our function, aren't we? Let's just double check that. That was from yesterday. Sorry, it's going slightly off piste here. Yeah, we are using RT. They do comma separate their arguments as well. And we're not doing that anymore. Let me just, <laughs> before I forget, eliminate that possibility because it'd be really, really embarrassing if we found out that that was a problem no right okay so back to this um so if we scroll down here feature rt device selected does any of this talk about USB? Here we go. Config all feature USB. Any, and then it lists all of these down here. So 730 is included. That's good. So it should make, um, so if this feature is called upon, it should make that available. So that's the actual how itself. So that's saying that it could expect that feature. pub mod so that's just using otg 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 hold on a cut and pick a minute can i just use otg then Hold on, OTG.
Um, that's weird. So if I look at this file here, what it seems to be saying is that it's exporting OTG underscore HS and OTG FS modules. Okay, let me just come back then. So if that's the case, can I do this in here? I can't, can I use it as OTG? No, as the how, can I? OTG. Interesting. Something odd here. If I do this in my IDE, oops, IDE. Okay, hold on. What have I done? That is very strange. I'm sure just now it was um, giving me OTG at root. Let me just put this back because that, that one, FS. Let me just double check that's not. Um, Yes, yeah, so it could not find OTG FS. So why could I just now? Why can the um, IDEC OTG FS? At the top level, we can see a bunch of
registers. I can see some OTG registers. Where are they coming in from? Putting OTG registers in from somewhere and I have no idea where. Maybe that's just the F7 stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. So, um, I can't do that. That does new work. Just double check, but I don't think that will work. Nope. Still can't find this. This is what's puzzling me. It doesn't like this here, but yet we know. So let's go back to the site again. Oh, what joy this is. I think I need more tea. Oh dear, nearly out. So if I look in the um, my lib, it, has, it publishes a module called OTGHS. At root level. But we do not see that. We do see the pack. Where do they deal with the pack? The pack was something we didn't see before. A pub use mm -mm, as pack. So if you're doing a pub mod OTG conditionally on these features, that seems to expect USB FS, which seems to suggest we should pass that in, in here, in the features. which is what we're doing here, right? Or, I mean, what did we do before on that fix? What was it? Was it like, um, let's go back to here. Do it the um, other way. Is it this how we did it? I don't remember now the format. I might have to go and check. Hold on. When we did this before, the way that they suggested. was um what was the format they used the full format so dependencies dot da 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 features and then that so features so that would be how so let's just turn that off for a sec I'm going to use the full uh, the long
Alright. And then comment out that temporarily. Uh, do we actually need features here? What happens if we do that? Does it complain? It doesn't complain about that, but does it actually make any difference? Or we did save that, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, if we go back and build with that turned on, what happens? Same problem, I bet. Oh. Oh, do, 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 do. No, I've got a. What have I done here? Is that right? Did I put that back to how it should be? Yes, and I shouldn't have that there. That's what. Right, so okay, we're getting a different So it's just correcting, um, I should use the uh, structure um, format on these. It's easy enough to fix. And what's this one? Note. Fair enough. Why doesn't it like my comma? What? Oh, does it expect a structure? Is that what they're saying? Yes, I think it is. My bad. So it's that fixed. Um, what's the next one? Oh God, no, it doesn't, it doesn't like that, it doesn't like that at all. Struck literal body without a path. Oh, come on. Oh, is it a struck, not a function? Am I just being a dick? <laughs> Oh my word, I bet I am. Silly me. Okay, we've gotten somewhere here. I think we've solved it. We do have another problem, but let's forget about that for a sec. Hold on, let me think about this. 
So it's not complaining about the OTG stuff, right? So if I do this now, in my IDE, it should recognize Yeah, it recognizes the uh, USB, look. Ah, <sighs> right, okay. So it's now picking up the USB here. But what it's complaining about is this USB bus. It's saying there is no USB bus. So let me just check for typos in my code, because maybe I've uh, used the wrong case somewhere here. In the example, it says... An example they use USB capital U bus capital B USB capital U capital B so why doesn't it like this one here Let's see where they use this actually, because that's got me a little bit worried. Where do they use USB bus? Uses it down here. It does use it later on. Right, so um, we seem to have solved the um, first problem but not a second but let's just go back so what I've changed here is the rather than using the one-liner way of incorporating features if I try and add multiple features in this list here it doesn't like that so I've just cancelled that and I've done it the long-handed way of adding this in here and then I've added in the features manually here which it now seems to be picking up so it's showing me uh, USB FS. So it's obviously activating that. So these two different ways of doing it are, are different. So this shortcut route is not the way to go. Either that or I'm doing the syntax for it wrong. So let's just stick with this. That, so that's solved that problem. However, when I look at the main code, what it's now complaining about, so it's found this USB here, it seems to be happy with that. Um, but what it doesn't like is this USB bus here. So maybe they've changed the name of that. That sometimes happens with these things. So if I was to do... One way that you can find out is you can do, in my ID, it's quite good at um, this. I can do this, and it will tell me USB bus. It's got USB, USB bus, and USB type. So it finds that. I spelled that wrong. Am I going snow blind? Am I making a typo here? That's probably what I'm doing. Probably something stupid. Oh. Forgive me, I'm not reading the error messages, watch. I've forgotten I've got strict warnings turned on, which means I get an error instead of a warning. 
all that's happening here is it's saying I'm not using USB bus and that's why it's not combining. So our problems are solved. So I can move on to the bit that does use that. So um, we've got the new USB here that works. Then what do we need? Um, we're going to need, right, we need some memory for the buffer. That's what we need. We have to pass a buffer in um, to supply the USB with some functioning storage. Uh, EP. Oops. EP. Uh, memory. Memory. Um, where are we importing that? We need to import that, don't we? Oh, I know what we need. We need this bit. That's what we've not got. And Also need this, I think. Come back to that in a minute. Are we, um, hmm. USB device, SGM32, interlock. Move a few things around here, keep things together where possible. Ah, do -do 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 -do. Right, um, that's going to interfere with this interrupt. No, it isn't. That's great. That's great. Let's come back to that in a second. EP memory. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to have a um, an array, small array. What do they use? They use and one kilobytes worth. That would do. Um, Thirty-two bit. Interestingly. Why is that 32 bit? Oh, is it, are they using um, are they using Unicode? No, they can't be. Um, and let's initialize this. This is statically allocated. Um, so what you can do with the Rust arrays is you can do this, which is kind of nice. That means initialize all of these to zero. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me um, I 
I'll push the whole thing so far. Do you just want the Tomal file? Sorry, um, because uh, Laurie's playing along here, so he just wanted the update. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, it's, what is it? Okay, it's pushed, um, Laurie. So you can give it a go, make sure it works your end as well. Um, so where was we? Oh yes, yes, we were doing memory allocation. So there's our memory. And then the other thing we need, looking at the example is the um, USB bus itself. And we need to use the correct spelling. Uh, we need to pass in the USB and we need also an unsafe uh, passing okay so this is really not a good thing to do normally a very bad thing to do is use the unsafe like this but we do no, we're not going to manipulate this directly ourselves, this um, EP memory buffer, the endpoint memory buffer. We're only going to operate from within the USB functions that wrap it. So we're probably safe doing this. We're not going to start any fires. The other thing we're going to need is a serial adapter um, because what we're going to do is we're going to use there's a serial abstraction that can wrap around um, the USB which is very clever interesting way of doing things so we're going to do that um, mm -hmm. we use serial port and we're going to do 
do a new one. Um, and we're going to pass in our USB bus. So we've created the USB bus from the USB device, uh, device here, and then we're passing that into um, a serial device that wraps the USB. So this is like a generic serial uh, port. These are really traits, i.e. interfaces, their behaviors. So it's fairly easy to wrap, create a serial uh, trait, and then implement a USB version of that, which is what they're doing in the HAL here, which is kind of nice. We like that. Oh, hello, Twinkles. You better come and say hello. Are you going to say hello? Do I... Dreamers. This is Crystal, who comes to bother me every now and then, don't you? Hmm? Normally when you want food or lots of attention, I can't give you lots of attention now. You can say hello to everyone. Hello. Are you going out? Is that what you want? Or are you feeding yourself food? Good. Good five minutes. I probably want to go out as well. Um, let me know if that fixes the, if the Tommel fixes fix your issues, your end as well, um, Laurie, in case I need to change anything else. So we've got our serial set up here, where they do it, and we need our device now. Um, let's what do we want USB? Oh, what am I doing? It's because I'm not concentrating. Um, what do I want? I want USB device. So USB uh, device. I can't use USB device because it's already in the um, at this level. So just use USB dev, and that's going to equal what we have to use here is this USB device builder. Um, what do we need to pass in? We need to pass in the USB bus. And we need to pass in the... Um, yeah, so here's where we do... Um, Let's just use the same things that they're using here, device ID and stuff. I should really use the ones that um, I have at some point, but it doesn't matter for this. USB vid PID. Interesting. And then they go out to a course. USB vid PID. Um, I need, what do I need? I need two numbers. They're using 0, X, uh, 1, 6, C, 0. And they're using 
zero x twenty seven D D twenty seven D D okay. And then, uh, what else do we need to configure? We need to configure a whole bunch of stuff. Manufacturer. Um, what shall we call ourselves? Well, let's just do my storm. I mean, it wouldn't be my storm. It will be whatever the manufacturer ID is, and I can't remember what that is for our USB IDs. So let's just do that for the moment. And no, don't do that. What's next? Product and what should we put in here? Well, in this case, it's actually core, I guess. Uh, product, 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 serial. And uh, <laughs> you, um, that would do, I guess. And device class, well, we know that one. Uh, that's CDC, isn't it? USB. The serial focus. Uh, class uh, USB CDC. See anyone in there? They're all they support right now. And what else do we need? Max packet size. Max. Install packet size sixty four, and then we need to build that voila. Okay, that's okay. Right now, um, right, that's all of the template stuff, I guess. And in the loop, we're going to need to do something. What are they doing here? Might just excuse me for a second, guys. I just need to check.
been needing some refreshment for the dry mouth. So all this mumbling about features in the tumble file. I can't believe how many problems we get with these libraries. It seems to be the hardest bit. Strangely. Close that door. Oh, that's better. Um, so, what are they doing? In their loop, they are polling the USB device. So let's do that first. I mean, I might need to change this later. Um, let's make that a higher priority. So let's do this before we do the other stuff. We'll keep the other bits in there for the moment. Hopefully they won't interfere. So if um, if it isn't, um, if the pole is negative, negative, negative USB device pole. We need to pass in the serial, but we want to be able to mutate reference according to this. Um. Type. So if there's nothing going on, continue is what it's saying. So that's going to bugger up our other part of the loop. Mm. That's going to stop our uh, our interrupt working. No worries, we'll come back to that in a bit. Just want to see if we can get any further. It's never going to get to this unless it's done a um, so really. I don't know what I should do. Let's take that out and put it afterwards. Then we won't um, have that issue. Direct down here. Semicolon. Right. However, if there is something from the polling of the USB device, then we're going to need to do something. What are we going to need to do? We're going to need something to hold the results temporarily all we're going to do is send it back slightly modified of course in this example um, so let's create a local one here uh, so it's just a small buffer I don't think it needs to be this big. Why are they doing it so big? <laughs> Just 
just for this little test, but whatever. Um, 512 bytes worth. Let me just check something here that I did. Hmm. Uh, should we zero that off as well? It's interesting. Why are they doing that? Oh, well, they're just forcing it to be 8 bit zero, right? Okay. Uh, zero. U. So they're going to initialize this to zero. And again, same number 512, wasn't it? Okay. Then we're going to have to look at what we've got. We're going to match the incoming. We know this link there because of the poll. So we're going to do a read um, into our um, buffer. Buff. And then Something it doesn't like about my formatting, that's what it is. So what are we going to match? Okay, well that's going to return something. Um, it's going to be an okay with something in. Uh, that actually returns the count. Making sure that it's greater than zero. I think, is that right? Yes. Oh, come on, stop messing with me. Oh, of. Bring a div. Um. So basically, if OK is returned, and OK itself will contain the value of count, which is what we're using here. Then what we need to do is uh, do something with it. I guess, and we do that in a second. The other possibility is that there is nothing. Um, in which case, we won't need to do anything, so, but let's be explicit about that and put that in here using this little joyous 
thing. Actually, they're using that. Okay, fair enough. Right, so um, if we do have something, in what they're doing they're doing a for each or four C in um, so it's an iterator on the buffer or particularly not on the whole buffer because there will only be however many count um, characters in there it's not like Charles though the u8s I think um, so it'll go from 0 to count is that right looking what are they doing yeah 0 to count and then we're gonna return the iterator for that Hmm. I don't like what we're doing here. Why is that? What am I missing? Have they done some kind of syntactical faux pas? Why isn't it let me call in the iterator? I'm sure the compiler will tell me in a second. Hmm. Right, let's do what they're doing. So what they're doing, which is quite uh, interesting, they are going to convert all lowercase to uppercase. Otherwise, they'll return whatever it is when we come to the right. So they're, they're literally converting every byte on the fly from upper, from lower to upper. Um, which is interesting. We can change this in a bit. So if it's in the uh, lower case range, that's what they're saying here. Uh, is that right? I forget my ASCII codes. I'm like this you could do with an ASCII table. I'll find one in a second. I'll just check what they're doing here. And what they're doing is they're then changing that character to uh, 
Oh no, it's more complicated than that. This is actually quite clever. Okay, so let me show you what they're doing here. So this is where they select the range and that will correspond to, let me just show you the browser. Let you get this up. Hmm. So what we're saying is hex here, 61 to 7a. So if we look at the ASCII table, 61, damn it. Oh, I didn't really want to go to this entire site. Eh, go away. Do not draw this to me. I shouldn't have followed it. So hopefully that's big enough. What you can see is 61, hex 61 is A, and that goes right through to where where do we want to go? 7A, which is Z. Yeah, but it's these are the lowercase sections. So if the character is between those two values, then what it does is it takes whatever that value is and it ands it with 0x20. Zero zero. Um, and that basically moves it from 61 to 7a to 41 to 5a. So if we look at 41 to 5a, capital A. Oh, I clicked on it again. Such a fool. 41 to 5a, which is Z, caps. Smart, very good. We like at that. Nice trick. Surprised I haven't seen that one before. There you go. Long time since I've done ASCII stuff. So that's what that's doing. So it's going through the um, buffer. So it's done a serial read, dumped that into the buffer, um, and if 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 the count was more than zero, so in other words, if if anything was uh, read, then what we will do is iterate over that butter a uh, buffer from the first entry to the count entry or the one before uh, the count, I because it's count number of entries. Um, what the iter mut does, it returns an iterator, but it, it returns a mutate, mutated version of the reference into that array. Mutation meaning we can change it. If, it, if we just had the iter here, we'd be able to iterate through them, but we wouldn't be able to change the value that we're pulling across. So it put, goes across each one of those individually, looks at them, if they're between these ASCII codes, it converts them from lower to upper. Simple, very nice. So now our buffer is going to have an upper, uppercase version of um, of whatever we've entered in or sent on, from the host side. So uh, the next step is we're going to write that back. So let's just do that now. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so this may do this in pieces. I might explain that. Um, Hmm. It's guessing that's um that should be result. Shouldn't it? That would probably So while the right offset is less than count, it starts off at zero, so obviously it's going to be left. And then we're going to write a chunk at a time. Okay. So this is a slice into that array from what the current right offset is, which initially will be, will be zero. Ah, bollocks. Uh, Uh, right. Set through to count uh, okay. So if we're okay for writing, um, the size that we can write, interesting way of having it, which is nice So, If that is greater than zero, there's no point if it's, uh, Look what you're doing. Um, look what you're doing. Um, so if the length's greater than zero, then what we need to do is we need to we need to do um, we need to set the right offset to the length
Now we need to add it. We add the length in. We increment by length, right? Um, and if we can't do that, oh, I nearly forgot. I'm sure the compiler would have warned me. So what we're saying here is, first of all, we're initializing this to zero. And then while the offset is less than count, because we're going to do it in chunks, we don't know what size we can send. Uh, well, we do, because we've set the buffer size, but you don't always know that. Um, so we're going to do a serial write. And what that does is it returns the length, the chunk we can write, the size of the write. And as long as that's greater than zero, we can send something. So what we do is um, we send the whole thing, or if the length is less than the count, what we're doing is then whatever the right offset is, so it's zero to start with the count, however many bytes we can send or it is bytes um, we will send that many and then we will at the same time increase the right offset by the length i.e the number of bytes we sent and then it will probably go round again so if it hasn't completed it will go round again until it sent all of the bytes i think that's right Let's do a compile and see what it's actually saying to us. There's bound to be some errors. So what does it like here? Interrupt. You cannot find STM32F. It's just pin. Thirteen. This when I changed the could not find thirty two F seven. Oh, of course not. That be x zero. I guess it must be. Uh, but I don't know for sure. Let me that more likely. So this is an unused import. Oh.
Oh. I don't need this yet. I'm not doing the interrupt yet. Doing. Negative. No. Didn't want to delete it. I just want to comment it out because we'll come back to that. Right, okay. Uh, what else have we got? Hmm, let's just rerun this. So, um, the problem we've got now is HSE clock. So, it's still got a problem with this. Still doesn't it like that. Hold on, so, what are we doing here then? Oh no, I don't know. I still think this is wrong. Hold on, let me change this back. I don't like this. Just change this back for a sec to what it was originally. Um, I think it's still going to complain about this, isn't it? Uh, I should see clock for expected type. Yes. Yeah, it's complaining about wanting to use that. Ah, good evening, I post. How are you? We're getting through. We're getting close to trying to get USB running, but we struggled with a few more um, library issues once more. Probably down to mostly my incompetence, but some reason this is complaining here so what is it is it looking for a hsc clock right hsc no it should be clock mode no hsc clock new hsc clock which should be part of rcc hsc clock HSC clock is part of RCC, so that should be the right thing. But what they do is they do I'm sure. This is what they do in their example here. Oh, I'm just being an idiot. It's new. That's why I'm getting it bloody wrong. Donkey. Oh, what kind of error is this? Rust LLD failed, exit code 1. That's not good. Oh, 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 this is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's saying... Um, huh. Error, too many errors emitted. But what it says here, look, error section dot text will not fit into the region flash. 
Jesus, how big is this thing? Why is it so big? It's because of the debug stuff, I guess. Let me, I can do a release, I think. This is right. Let's try doing a release version. Maybe the debug's doing something stupid. Yes, I'm doing good. Getting there slowly but surely with this stuff, I hope. Um, did you watch any of the previous? I, I don't think you managed to get the uh, live streams because I tend to stream whilst you're working. Presumably you're in the States. I don't know whereabouts in the States. I forget. Um, I'm still viewing to catch up. What are you watching one of the previous ones and watching the live one at the same time? Wow, that's multitasking. <laughs> wow. There's a lot of pauses <laughs> where we scratch our heads. Normally to do with fixing the feature stuff and the cargo library stuff in the um, cargo.toml. Oh, that's compiled and it's actually pulled up GDB that's a really good sign now I didn't like one of the um, GDB commands hold on what well, there's only two in there error and reset it says error erasing flash with v flash packet oh right I may have um I did move this a little bit. I wonder if I've messed with the. Um, let me. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. And just check my open OCD. Bear with me a sec, folks. I may have broken something here. Let's just restart open OCD. Let's just check all these connectors here. And I'll do a reset as well of the. Um, Hmm. Hopefully, I really got to do something about the connectors on here. They are not good. I'm not happy with those. We restart. Open OCD. Uh, listening on bug can't. Assert SRST. Oh, okay. Just run this. Error in source command file. Remote connection closed. Okay. Be like that then. Sometimes it does this. Just come back out and then I restart it and it might be all right second time around which reminds me of that fabulous damn song from the black album that's looking better yes we're in Ooh, right we're at main that's interesting so what happens if i do continue now does it hang like a good one or does it do something so i should still have my button working as well shouldn't i but let's but wait a minute, if this USB works, I should hear it ping. Should I not? Uh, and I'll update you in just a sec. Hold on, Lauren. I just heard that fabulous ping. Do you get to hear the noise out of my machine, guys? I don't know if I'm rooting that through to you, but that was the sound of something. Yeah, device is ready. USB serial device content is set up and ready to go. Ooh, so you can hear it, but you can probably hear it through my mic. I don't think I'm rooting my audio out to prevent feedback issues because I don't have headphones on because they get a bit uncomfortable. That's good. Let me just save this then. 
That's great news. Um, all the wrong with it. Worried about that debug not fitting, debug build not fitting in Flash. Um, so this is good. This is good stuff. USB. Uh, CDC added and working. in pole mode okay i'm just pushing it now hold on laurie you're following along which i presume you are it's done do a pull laurie and uh try it your end see if it works your side so um, let me just catch up with the chat here because I've missed a bit of this. Um, Laurie says, I'm surprised that post humans have to work. <laughs> to which I post human says, I'm one of the lesser beings still relegated to earth. No. Very good. Uh, Laurie Griffiths says it commands can you permit it? I've done that. I post. I heard it. Yeah. And Laurie says, yes, I heard too. Right. So let's just wait a sec. Um, let's see if um, if Laurie uh, has this working as well at his end. That would be kind of cool. How are we doing time wise? Yeah, we're doing OK. How many hours have I been streaming actually? Thinking about it. Oh, because I started early. I'm thinking I've started at eight, and of course I haven't. I've started at seven. Oh, don't do that. OBS, do not do that. Um, it's been up and down a little bit. I don't know what the frame rate's like, guys. Two hours and 42 minutes already. Um... I'm going to go and do one of these. So what I want to do now, then, let's open, uh, what do we want to do? Putty. We'll use Putty, shall we? To talk to it. Uh, COM10, wasn't it? I got up. So let's open COM10. Uh, I hate putty. I hate it with a passion. Uh, how do I change the bloody font on this? Because it's tiny and small and you won't be able to see it. Hold on. How do I do that? Where are the change settings? Uh, appearance. Font quality. Let's have it anti alias. Let's push the boat out. Uh, font Korea new 10 point. Well, I think we can increase the size of that. Let's do something nice like Lucinda console. Let's take it up a tad. Okay. Apply. Now you might actually be able to see this, guys. So we should be connected now to uh, COM10. So let me share Putty with you guys so that you can see it. And move it up here. Okay. It's huge now. Massive. So here we are. So if I type, I've got no caps lock on. H E L L O. And it's in caps. It's echoing back in caps. 
that's success i'd say and i can hear a meow hold on let me just um deal with crystal what are you doing are you come back for some more food or are you going out more food i see biscuit time yes nice man nice thank you i post good 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 we have usb cdc working and just to show you it will probably show if i go to um windows isn't so good at no i'm not going to do that it's not going to tell me anything i was going to go to the device manager but it's crap at showing you the details because it uses the windows driver and stuff but yes we are there we are up that is marvelous is yours working Laurie you'll be running on Linux won't you so you could use minicom Yeah, I had that problem just now, which is why I had to fiddle with them and then restart open OCD. Lloyd's uh, ST link wires have come undone. As I said, I need to improve my um, JTAG tooling setup because mine's flaky as hell as well. Um, this is good news. However, what's worrying me is why when I try to debuild in debug mode, it, the, uh, it didn't have enough flash to fit it in. Let me just check my memory size, actually. Sixty four K. So my link is right. Oh, sorry, the the um, memory file it's got the right right size. I couldn't possibly be using up sixty four K, surely. What on earth is it putting in there like, making it that size? Um we can look at the size as well um which i will do in a minute is that because i'm using a big buffer no the buffer's only that doesn't affect the flash and it's only 1k anyhow what on earth could it be can't be the library surely i might need to check what libraries i'm using but it fits in in release, but not. Um... Oh dear, Laurie's forgotten which way they go. <laughs> Shit. Oh, good luck with that, mate. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm just going to stop that then for a second. So let's um, put putty to one side. I might throw a wobbler in a minute. Let's quit this. So let's stop this running. Hello, Twinkle. Do you want to say hello? Mm? Do you want to say hello to folks? Meow. Have you just been eating your biscuit, Bobs? Your biscuits. Disgusting biscuits. Can you see that? Look. Can you see yourself? It's the internet. It's full of cats. Let me go out. What do you want to go through here? What do you want to do? Decision time. Um. Right. Oh, my laptop's warm. 
Um, let me think. Is it cargo size? Maybe I shouldn't have run that. Oops, seems to be rebuilding. Hmm. Let's see if I can look it up. I forget. Why is Putty still showing? On my window when I've turned it off. Could not compile black crap. Failed to pass crate metadata. Let me just check I'm running the right command here. Uh, there's a good way of looking at these files. Installation getting started hardware, some hosting packing. First, last. No, it's not one. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, I'm sure. There was some stuff about this. Bear with me a sec, folks. I can look at the headers, would that tell me? Something a bit more than that. I'm very curious about why it is so big. Oh, wait a minute. Cargo size. That was the correct. Hold on. Cargo size. Maybe if I do cargo size with the other. Hmm. The other parameters. Would that work? Maybe that will work. Oh, there we go. What was it, it complained about? Was it the um text section I'm guessing we go back uh, yeah text will not fit into the flash region right so the size of that now this is as a release if I try and do debug it finishes um, Cat completely muffled the mic. Well, that's because they're up here. <laughs> I forgot about that. Sorry, guys. 
Um, so on the release version, it says that that text size is 33K, which is large, I think. But if I do debug, it won't build. So I can't see the size of that. But it's obviously more than 64K once you add in all the other bits. Why is the text section so large? What could possibly inflate the text section? when it's doing a debug build to that size. What does it store for Christ's sake? Can I, is there a way of, um, We've got a strange example here. They're doing something really weird here. They're doing this in the example I'm looking at. Yeah, that's good. That's better. What about using embedded Rust? Depends what you mean by that. I am using embedded Rust. This is being compiled and targeted at the arm uh, and I am programming the um... oh, you, you probably missed the start. Sorry. Let me just explain so you can see what you're looking at. So um, so we're developing the software for the next generation of boards. OK, but we don't have the board yet. So what we're doing is we're using the ice core which is a system on the module that comes with black ice mx okay that's what we're programming on right now which is the arm device um you can actually see it here assuming i don't break the bloody but in my case i'm not i've not got it on the black ice mx carrier i've got it on one of my own personal carriers that i use for testing um called a blackboard but the point is we're programming the F7 that's on that board, the microcontroller, um, which only has 64K of flash, which is actually fairly reasonable. It's not like a tiny amount. So what I'm questioning is when I'm, when I'm making this for a debug build, it, uh, it says there isn't enough flash for that. So I'm trying to work out. So I'm looking at the release build here. And there's an enormous amount of in the dot text area. But I don't know what that is. But even the debug info is quite large here. That says, actually, that can't be right. Debug info. But it doesn't load that into the flash, does it? Surely. And debug pub names. What the hell is debug info? That's an awful lot of stuff. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'm not so good on the binary tools for elves and stuff. I post, but yeah, you could go and have a look at that. But it's an. Is it trying to store this stuff? So does it build the debug information there, but it doesn't actually include it in the actual flash when I do a release? But it, if I'm building the debug one, it does actually try and load all of this crap into the um, into the flash because that's ginormous. Look at that. That's like 135k. Just that bit, the debug info. I don't think it won't load all of that. Hmm. It just seems like an awful lot and I have no idea what it's doing. Even the size of this with the USB stuff, which isn't a lot, is it saying it's 28240 for the release version. That still seems high to me. Um, no, I don't think it's actually putting that in the flash. That's just, it's using that in GDB, I post. So if you look here at the two columns, I don't think it's loading that into, yeah, so total wise, it thinks it would need, you know, 668K or something, but it can't put all of that in. Anyhow, there's something odd going on there that I need to understand better. But it works in release mode, which is good. How you have you, have you given up, Laurie? Because you can't remember your connections or whatever. I feel better if it works at your end as well. But 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 so that's good. And Putty works and talks to it. So let's go. That is a win. I think that enables us to mark this as a done one. I have ST-Link connected, but not seeing the USB device. So you're on Linux. Have you done an LS USB? Have you got the USB cable plugged into the right uh, connector? It's this one. Ah. Uh. This one here, this end, nearest the uh, corner hole fixing. That's the USB you need to use. Make sure you plug it into the right one. It's the same one that we use for um, normal programming. That's the FS, OTG FS port, or the one that's connected to the OTG FS port on the STM32 F7. Yeah, or as IPO says, or the D messages, D M E S G S. Um, I did not have it connected to the computer. That would explain it. That's a doll. <laughs> I'm out of water again. Might have to do a refill in a sec. How are we doing for time? Is it good on a Friday night? Mm -hmm. um, let me go back to the code. Let's save that by the way, because that's going to change. Um, whilst Laurie's looking at that, so right now, what we've got, I wonder if the button still works. This would be interesting. Oh, I'm not running anymore. Hold on, 
Let's see if the button still works at the same time as well. So I didn't check that. Patty's throwing a wobbler. Need to reset the terminal. Continue. Patty, you should be resetting yourself. Uh, restart session. Let's do a world. Yeah. Hello world. Look at that. Um, oh, it doesn't do new lines. Look. <laughs> okay, it's running. So button. Yeah, and our button's working as well. Can you see in the picture there? It's difficult to see. Off, on, off, on. So interrupt and stuff is and on. <coughs> so before still working. That's good. And yours is working as well. Well done, Laurie. Hey, success. Good, good, good. The only thing I was wondering now was could we? Could we wait a minute. I'm going to take a bit of a deep breath here and think. <coughs> what we really want to do. See, at the moment we're using a pole okay we probably wouldn't want to do that we probably want that to be interrupt driven i think let's get some water hold on So, um, I'm trying to remember now. Let's have a quick look rather than just trying to remember. I'm pretty sure our USB on my storm was interrupt driven. <laughs> Certainly don't want to be polling if we can help it. So let's have a quick look. Uh, Talking about GitHub. Uh, let's just go and find ice core firmware. So I turn the browser on so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. My foxes are out. I can hear the neighbor's dog barking uh ice boots uh main dot c hold on no i need the my storm my storm wait what am i looking at here wrong one Source. Damn it, what am I looking at? This isn't right, is it? Nice boot source. Let's just respond to that, sorry. Um, 
firmware. I have it in the right folder, aren't I? Source. Firmware. Nice bit. This isn't the... This is not the source code I was looking for. This is not the source code I was looking for at all. Name. Oh, I was looking at the wrong branch. <sighs> I've got to fix that. Crikey. MyStorm.cpp. Sorry. Thanks, Laurie. I should have um, looked at what you were saying. So uh, I think it's in here. So I've got, ah, oh, it's coming back to me now. I haven't looked at this in a while. So yeah, so there's an interrupt callback when a packet has been read from USB CDC, which is this function here. So it is interrupt driven so the interrupt then calls the usb cdc rx callback that's all part of their howl the stm32 howl so we need to be doing something similar it then passes it on to either the uh ice 40 uh class or the flash class depending which mode it's in I, is it going to be writing the information to the flash or is it going to be just reprogramming the um, ICE 40? Right, so yeah, we really need a similar thing. Now, I question is, uh, can we do that? We'd need an interrupt. I think what we could do is, if we had the right interrupt, hold on, we'd need to do something like, and I'm going to have to go and look at some examples here. They don't give an interrupt-driven example, unfortunately. But basically, we're looking at something like this. So we need something of this nature. We need the interrupt attribute as well. To tell Rust that this is an interrupt. Uh, where is it getting that from? Oh, it's just complaining about that. I don't actually need that in there. I just use that for finding it, really. Maybe it will stop complaining now. That should be the right um, interrupt. Probably different types of events going on, but what I'd probably want to do is do something here. Do something like A 
probably want to do something similar to this. Um, or would I? Could I do this? Can I just copy this whole thing in there? Would that work? I can see some issues with this. Let me think. So I need that. Um, no. No continue here. So I'm going to need to poll, and if I poll, can I do a continue in an interrupt like that? I don't think I can, can I? There is no return. Can I just return? Is that what I can do? That just seems wrong to me. Uh, There's going to be a whole crap load of issues with that. I actually only want to do something here. So what I should really do is the opposite. Something like that. <laughs> I bet that probably won't even compile. Nope. Um. Right, let's see where we're going wrong. Cannot find value USD. Oh, of course. Of course, of course, course, what am I thinking? Right. Uh, USB dev, serial, serial, the whole caboodle are not visible in the interrupt. I'm not sure I should even be doing this in the interrupt, really. I think this is a bad idea. I'm going to go backwards. This is a bad idea. What I'm going to do
I do need to do the pole. I'm going to do something similar to here. Bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another semaphore. Just temporarily just do this. Oh god. And let's just temporarily do that. Because I need to just change some shit first. If I do this, I need to set this up. Uh let's just refactor this into Uh, that and then I can do this uh, here is B so I've now got two of these So I've got the same sort of shit going on here. I'd actually do it in the same one, really. Don't need that. What I'm doing here then is hmm.
right. I've got my structure. Um, Do I actually need that in the critical section? That is the question. Do I need to do the USB in the critical section or can I do that outside of that? I could do the serial read in the... I don't want to do... I don't really want to deal with the USB activity in the critical section. I only want to be changing the semaphore. I don't actually need everything else in the critical section. Oh, okay, true. No, I don't need that. What am I talking about? Um, I'm not avoiding the pole, Laurie. I'll come back to that in a sec. I'm just trying to get this integrated into it. I could lob this entire thing in there. It seems a bit daft. Put it all in the critical section temporarily. I don't think it needs to be in there. In fact, it's probably going to complain. Right, so basically what I'm saying is, right, so when there's an interrupt, I this interrupt will be fired on a number of different events, I wouldn't wonder. I'm not looking at the detail, but in the howl. But whenever certain events occur in the howl, this OTG FS, if we, if we register for the interrupt, it will be running this interrupt here. So what we want to do there is um whilst we're in this we know an event's happened but not all of those events are necessarily going to be relevant to us because with usb you tend to have from memory you have things like uh usb reset events usb power up events plus you get usb you know a receive event right um so if this interrupt is fired we know something's happened So what we're just going to do is we're, that we're only going to bother running the uh, oh, that was the wrong format. No. Quite look so. We're only going to bother running the poll on an interrupt. 
So we're not polling every time we loop around. How do we register the USB OTG interrupt? Well, by placing it, placing a function that returns nothing and takes nothing with the right name for the official name of the interrupt inside the how with the attribute interrupt above it, just like the same we did for the uh, um, external interrupt. So when it does that, um, Let's just get this right because I copied and pasted this. Where is it? Where is B coming from? How does it know? How does it know this? How does it know to do that? Just trying to think what magic this is performing here. This is not USB pin. That's wrong. What is that object here? It's called button pin borrow, right? Here it's, what is this device? Oh, this is where it gets tricky. This device here will be the OTG device. So I'm looking for a, um, a clear interrupt. Interrupt pending bit. Now, what is that done on? Is that done on? The USB device, or is it done? Hmm, USB device dot is there nothing for clear interrupt. No, it's not USB device, USB bus. The only thing that's worrying me here is, what am I polling? I am, am I polling the USB or am I polling the serial? This could throw a spanner in the works. USB device. No. Do 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 shit. It's not USB depth. Shit. Um okay. I need to pass a USB device. I need to make it a global mutex like I did with the pin.
this thing here. But this doesn't actually seem to have My problem here is so what I what I need to do is I need to find the equivalent way of clearing the interrupt right so there's normally a clear interrupt pending bit So if I look on the button, which is what we're using here, node button, it has a clear interrupt pending function, right? Now I'm looking for the same sort of thing on the USB device. But when I look at that, there is no clear. And this is what's worrying me. Because I need some way of clearing the interrupt when I enter in. Otherwise, it will never get out of it. It will just interrupt constantly. That's my current problem. I assumed it, the interrupt would be accessible from the USB device. Um, trait. So I'd then wrap it just like I've wrapped the button in a mutex and use it down here. In exactly the same way. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. That was actually right. Um, I haven't wrapped it yet, so this doesn't exist, but. what that would effectively mean is that would need to be in here like thus So it would look like that. So I'd grab hold of the global USB dev, which will be uh, encased in a mutex 
trait. I'd grab that from the global access as mutable here. I then poll it and then I disable the clear interrupt and then I set the semaphore. In fact, I don't want to do that here. I only want to do that if if this is the case. So if it actually polls, I'm going to set the semaphore. I actually want to set that to true. Okay. But the problem I have is this here. Because that doesn't clearly interrupt. Let's just go back here and let's just wrap this up so, I, so that I've got all this stuff because I'm going to need the USB device. So that's the mutex, so mutex encased uh, button, right? Or the pin representing the button. And I'm going to create the equivalent USB one. Because what, you know, for those of you that missed the. Um, it should be uh, USB device. Uh, hmm. Um, this will be a U S. Ah, God damn this keyboard, it always does that. U S B device. which contains a uh, USB bus, USB bus, which also contains a uh, USB. All right, that's the type of device that USB dev is. So that's what we need in our mutex. Glue to glue. Thus. Hmm. So basically what we're saying here is we are, um, we, our USB device, we're gonna put it into an option, which is part of a ref cell which is controlled by a mutex, does it? Uh, I've got the wrong number here, so. What's wrong with that? Why is it moaning about that? Is it? That one. That one. Oh. <sighs> I'm a sandwich short of a picnic. Sorry. So I've now got my USB device, which I will share, just in the same way I share my button. All right. So if we look after we've made our button, we go and do this. 
uh, we initialize our button here. What I can do here is do a USB device. Borrow. Uh, oh. Yes. Dot replace. And I need to surround it in the sum. Uh, and it's my USB device. Use a comma. Need a comma. Um, right, just to explain, because um, IPO says the connection is lagging a lot. Yeah, apologies, it looks really low here as well. I don't quite know why that is. It's not CPU, it's um, network bandwidth. I do apologize. Right, so yesterday we did cover this use of mutexes. So um, what the mutex does is it wraps the object that we want to share globally because there are no global uh, objects in Rust. We have to be a bit more clever about that. So what we're doing is we're setting up a globally shared mutex instead that is capable of grabbing hold of this and providing a safe interface to that in critical sections so we're basically this is the way that we can actually share our usb device with an interrupt so even though we're setting up in the main and prior to the loop we can access it both within the loop itself and also um, within the um, interrupt here thus Right, what's going on here? So the point being, um, two frames per second, well, that's bad. Yeah, I'm down at uh, 670, 600, 700 kilobits per second, but it does keep popping back up. It may get better in a minute, going over a kilobit per second. Um, bear with it, it might improve. So the point is, this interrupt. what this interrupt does is, if there's an event on the OTG FS USB, it should fire this interrupt, right, which we've registered for this attribute, okay, and hopefully the correct name for the interrupt here. So what it does in the critical section is it goes and grabs that USB device that was initialized in the main, main loop 
sorry, in the main program. Um, and it accesses that by using a mutex, which enables it to safely get hold of that without it conflicting with its use in main. Um, that then returns the device here, wrapped in a sum. Uh, and again, that's uh, this uh, this is a, a rustism, but it's not just Rust that has some. Other languages have this as well. Rather than returning something or null, null is dangerous, right? You can return some, which means it's got something in it, or you return none, so you can safely handle those cases. Um, so that should never happen. It should not never return anything, but um our match needs to cope with all the permutations however unlikely so yes we get the usb device here that's been wrapped in this mutex we get it safely and we poll that because we've had an interrupt let's poll it and see if there's anything useful i mean the event could be something else it could be a reset or something else or a power event on the usb so we're polling that, and if that does, that poll does return something, we should immediately clear the uh, interrupt bit for the OTG FS interrupt, which we do here. But that's not going to work. I'll come back to that in a minute. That's what we should do. And then what we do is we set our seminar to true. Seminar. <laughs> it's getting late. Our USB semaphore, which we're grabbing hold of safely using a borrow, and we're setting that to true to say, yeah, we are ready. In fact, that should be. These are actually around the other way. Let's, let, let's just keep everything around the right way. I know it's illogical, but let's just keep it as it is. That's how it was set up with the button. So, and we're following the same thing. So, that having been set effectively in the interrupt. So, when this is looping around here in the main, it will keep checking this semaphore, the USB semaphore. And if it sees that that's set to false, it thinks, ah, right, well, there's some stuff going on uh, on the USB. So now I go off and do my serial read, do my write, and then return. And meanwhile, I'll reset that semaphore to true. Okay? Because it's handled. That's how this should work. The fly in the ointment is this, because there is no clear, <coughs> clear interrupt pending bit on the USB device here. It's just not there. I've had a look. There is no clear. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but there is no clear. So I don't know how to clear this interrupt that we're currently handling, because you should always clear your interrupt. Um, so that's going to be a problem because otherwise this is just going to go off all the time, right? The first thing you do when you get an interrupt is you clear the interrupt before you do anything. Because otherwise, as soon as you finish the interrupt, it will interrupt again. And you'll be in a forever loop with the interrupt, which is not how we want it to behave. But I don't know how to reset this particular interrupt. I expected there to be a clear interrupt pending bit on the USB device that would enable me to do that. But that's not the case. There's a subtlety in there. Um, let's just comment that out. I wonder what would happen if I just run this. It's probably just going to mess up. Let's see what the compiler says in here. It might give me some more information about some of the other crap I've done. So what's it? Uh, cannot find serial in this scope. Oh, 
Hmm. This is going to be even more tricky. I need to... I need to... Share the cereal as well. Err. Err. Ah. What I could do as a cheat let's try a cheat. Wow, there's a lot of things to share otherwise. Um, what I'm thinking is, do I actually need to do this poll here? What I could do is just set the semaphore every time an interrupt happens and then do the poll here. I know that's probably not the best way of doing it. Mm, what's bothering me, however, is how to reset the interrupt. Hmm. Let's try and share the whole thing. I mean, the compromise on the interrupt would be it wouldn't do the poll as often. It would only poll whenever there was an OTG FS event, which would be a lot less frequent because the other events we're not really worried about at this point. Let's just do that for the moment. Let's just not bother with this. Oh, can't do it again. Every time. Let's cheat. So I'm going to set the semaphore and I'm going to ignore the polling. And then if the seminar is set, I go and do this. Then I do do the poll here. It's going to make this. Um, even more convoluted but it will probably work It's probably slightly more healthy because it's not being called as often. Let's get rid of that. And I don't need to share this anymore.
Let's see if it actually compiles. Oh, it's running and it pinged. I need to reset the uh, session. Let me do the um, sort of lost putty here. Damn it. USB device is not recognized. Interesting. What does it say? Just rerun that again. I missed what it actually said. Fact is, it runs, which is quite interesting. Let's see. Let's just, sorry, I'm just going to quickly, before I run putty, let me just have a look at the device manager and see what it thinks it is. There we go. USB device connected computer malfunctioned and Windows does not recognize it. That's interesting. So it doesn't come up under ports. Um, what does it think? Unknown device. I think this is the one details device description. Let's see IDs. Hmm. Okay. So what I've done is most definitely broken it. <laughs> that much is for sure. Um, so it likes my code, but It could be because I'm not dealing, I'm not, I'm not disabling the interrupts. So the OTG FS calls. Yeah, it's not going to work. Let's go back. So it could be fired, it's going to be fired off as soon as it bloody connects, isn't it? That interrupt. And we don't want that. Damn it. So let's just not bother setting this and let's bring this back into life. Hold on. Let's re enable this. Even though we're not resetting it, maybe this will be less, less frequently called. At least it might come up properly. Wouldn't that be nice? Will this actually compile? I may be missing a thing or two here, of course. It is early days. All ah, right, so what doesn't it like about this? Cannot find cereal. Oh, God, yes, I need cereal. Of course I do. God damn, so we'd have to do the same damn thing, right? So we'd have to do this. Let's 
getting a bit mad. There are easier ways of doing this when we get into the next sections of these uh, um, streams. When we start perhaps trying to use a um, framework, we can avoid some of this new tech stuff. We can automate some of that. So we've got a serial device there. Uh, wait a minute, our type's wrong. Our type's wrong. What is our serial device? One of them. It's a serial. No. It's a serial port isn't it and it's a usb bus usb i've got to get this keyboard sorted it's doing my Damn head in. Uh, and it's a USB bus. And in that is a USB. Right. So this is the type that we are. Oh, you son of a bitch. Come on, come on. My IDs give me a hard time now. Complex now. There are easier ways of sharing resources. This one, need another one. Ah, yes, so this is.
Mm. And then we need the sail. Oh boy, never here. I could have created a struct with both these in and mutex that instead, but that might have been even more difficult. Why is it complaining about this? Okay, so what we're doing is we're unpacking the serial device from the mutex and only if we get that we then go on to Mac borrow the USB device and then happily that means that serial here should be happy. I can't see that cannot borrow immutable local variable serial as the notable what but 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 uh, do oh my god overly complicated oh what have I fucked up with now Static serial device. Hmm, what have I done here? Hey, I've messed up somewhere. Serial device. Function. Crikey, do I need another one? What do I need? Holy moly, rainbow brackets. Mm. Oh dear. Oh dear. It doesn't like my non mutational serial device. Oh my god. USB bus does not live. What the? Hold on, hold on. USB bus does not live long enough. 80. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, USB bus. What? Why doesn't it live long enough? What the hell happens to it then? Create it here. That's going to continue through the loop. And it's actually passed into serial port. Mmm, -hmm. frikies. We've got some heavy shit going on here with Rust memory management. Peripheral USB. Yeah. USB bus does not live long enough. What on earth happens to it then? These are all 
borrow of move value USB dev. Move occurs because USB dev has type USB device. It does not implement the copy trait. Eighty one. Value moved into closure here. Oh, I've got some serious issues here, folks. My word. Hmm. So I've added the seal. What did I change? I added the seal device and I've wrapped this and that's what's upset it. You have to be very careful, I post in Russ, about moving stuff around, passing it around, etc. Because it has this concept of borrowing. And if you break that, you're in trouble. Or if you try and borrow something that isn't around anymore or do anything daft, the kind of shit that you do in C all the time accidentally. <sighs> but it won't let you do that here. It checks compi at compile time. So by me sharing by me sharing the serial by mutex. messed with that um i've changed that from at mute haven't i but this is borrowed as mutable the serial at mute so it's already defined as at mute Okay, wait, 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 what, uh, serial, maybe it's mute, mutable, I guess the key is this one here where it's saying let much serial equals USB serial port new USB bus, borrowed value does not live long enough. Maybe the errors are stemming from that, but why? Why does the USB value? It didn't seem to have a problem with me wrapping this in the mutex and sharing the mutex globally. And that is requiring the USB bus. So why does it get its knickers in a twist um, with the serial port? Why can't I share the serial port in the same way? What have I done wrong? Have I defined this incorrectly? Serial port, USB bus, USB. Or could it be the fact that I'm trying to share two things that share a common USB? Is that the problem? What do you think, my post? Do you think that because the USB is housed in both of this, this thing, USB bus, is actually inside both of them? That's why it's complaining. Is it trying to copy that? Because it was fine when I was mutexing 
this USB device. But as soon as I've added a mutex for the serial device, aiming triple. Well, the mutex is being borrowed. Its contents, it's wrapping around the serial device so that I can manipulate it. Lifetime violation, yeah, that it is specifying a lifetime violation. But why does, yeah, what causes that lifetime violation? How does adding this mutex on the serial device, which is what I've done, how does that violate the lifetime of the at USB bus, which is what it's claiming here? Is it because it's trying to delete that and copy it <laughs> or something in the background to make it worse? Is it like calling a copy on it? I don't fucking know. Scroll down to the error below. Which one? This one? Argument requires that USB bus is borrowed for static. Okay, so I can't just use it here. I have to borrow it to use it in those. Is that what they're saying? Statics all have a lifetime of the program, yeah. So I'm using a reference to something here. What you're saying is I should borrow that? Statics all have lifetime of the program. You're talking about the mutex. Serial has a lifetime, but the USB bus doesn't appear to have it. But it worked with USB dev. When I wrap that in the mutex and shared that with the interrupt, it's fine. Is it the fact that I'm sharing these two things that both commonly require USB bus? Is that what's at issue here? Because when I mutexed this, created the static mutex wrapped around USB dev, that was fine. It didn't complain. In fact, it ran. But as soon as I did that with the serial as well, boom. It's almost like it's, could it be that it's trying to create a new USB bus? So it's dropping it, but maybe it's a singleton.
Yes, they do use different news. One's a USB device build on one's a USB D serial port new. I mean, it doesn't have a problem when it's being used here, but it's in the static sense that causes an issue. But it's really awkward, isn't it? Because it's this dev poll requires both dev and serial to do the poll. Damn. I wish I could avoid having to do that. The only way I know if this is relevant is by doing the poll. I'd need some way to look at the events that are triggering the interrupt. Maybe I need something other than the poll. ISR lifetime specifications. Mm. Um. Hmm. I don't know about that. I'm just wondering. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to use the poll. Maybe there's something else. Hold on. Wait a minute. What I need to look at is the events that are triggering the interrupt. <sighs> no, these are all, they're not specific to the USB device. These are all general. There is nothing of any general thing apart from pole bus. What the hell is bus? I was getting the bus from it. Force reset. Remote wake up enabled. Self powered. Are those state ADS? What I need to do is look at the events. Right. I think what I might do is call it a day now because it's late anyhow. 23 29. I probably want to do a bit more research and see if I can find an STM32. Uh, see if I can find another STM32 example that uses an interrupt because I don't think there is one here. I need to have a look through the various different, um, uh, what do you call it, HAL examples. I might look at the F4 HAL, because the F4 HAL is a bit more complete, because I may be doing it completely wrong anyhow, right? Hold on, let me see, there is one place I should check. You know, maybe that polling should only be used when you're polling, not in interrupt. Maybe I'm just trying to bodge that. Um, and that's probably not the best way of doing it, quite frankly. Let me see. I can see under here F7. There's a couple of others that I've been looking at in the past. Just have a quick look at the H7. Um, That example, there's a poll. Um, 
Um, um, um, um, what am I looking at here? There are some interesting ones in here. Pass through. Don't, don't use interrupts. But what is in here that's interesting? Hold on, let's have a look at their framework versions. I bet there isn't a USB one. I'm probably going to have to go away and look at this. There's nothing obvious that I can see. What I need to do is find a usage somewhere else. Where's the... Um, I bet there isn't a decent one that uses interrupts. You wait. So I look at the F4 examples. Yeah, I think they're all the same. None of them use interrupts. They all use that pole method. It seems to be the pole curve. Yeah. So what is that calling? Let's have a look what that's calling. Hold on. Bridge. Oh, uh, they're writing directly to the registers and stuff. They're reading the register OTG Global Reg CID Core ID. Hold on. Read Reg Global Reg G Inst. Wake up USB up. USB reset IPRX FL. Wake up, suspend, enum, dumb, reset, IEP, RX, FLV, receive something value. Maybe those are the, is that reading the um, registers for the interrupt? If reset, reset, if enum, dumb, dumb, no. Yeah, I could decode that. Yeah, well, there's, thank you, Laurie. Yeah, that's the um, clear the pending interrupt, which we'd need to do. Um, So that must be, is that servicing the interrupt? Configuring the bus sense for firm core soft reset. Yeah, I'd, I'd need to um, dig into the code. Why is that under HS? That's, hmm, yeah, I need to dig into that and understand it, which I'm not going to do tonight, basically. Do I need to have a good look at that over the weekend, I think, guys? But I think the information's in there that we need. 
I mean, the USB works anyhow, we know that, but we're just using the pole at the moment. <sighs> but I think the information is there for us to be able to um, perhaps get it working with interrupts. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to look through and see. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to call it today. Where are we? Crikey. Uh, four hours, 37. That's a, that's a long one. Enjoy your, uh, your dinner, I post. Um, I'll let everyone know when I'm doing the next stream. Um, don't forget, um, we've always got um, Discord in the meantime. So I'll let you know what I find down in Discord. If you get any time to look at it as well, Laurie, um, let me know. Laurie's saying maybe better to move on to Spy as Pole Loop. Maybe good enough. Possibly. I'll have to think about that as well. Or we could do that in the meantime whilst we're thinking about writing the interrupt. Okay, guys. Well, thank you. And um, I might do another stream if I have some good luck over the weekend looking at this. And I will let you know either down on Discord or on the forum. So keep your eye open. And, and I will probably... Be speaking with you folks at some point maybe tomorrow seeing how I get on looking at this code right ciao everyone <laughs>